so analytical method transfer is the defining moment to confirm that whatever analytical method that you have developed in a research lab is suitable and can be used in the quality control unit so during method transfer you must also take some measures or precautions so that whatever efforts that you have taken in developing that method will not get questioned or sometimes will not get in vain so in case if you are in the process of analytical method transfer and want to understand what are those precautions that you must not ignore what are those points that you must not ignore while various stages of analytical method transfer hello and welcome this is bhaskar napte from pharma growth hub and i am on the mission to help pharma professionals to achieve the absolute clarity on various topics and the one that we are discussing right now so in case if you are struggling with uh, your career growth and would like to unleash your true potential do consider joining the pharma growth hub so there is a link given in the description you join the whatsapp group of the pharma growth hub and then you can receive more details about the services let us begin with the presentation now so very first point when it comes to analytical method transfer how well do you know the method now so i am asking this question to the receiving unit the quality control personnel it is very important both the parties the transferring unit which is most of the times can be a analytical research lab and the receiving unit which is a quality control unit lab they must collaborate with each other in terms of executing this activity without any sort of non conformities so the first and foremost is being a receiving unit you need to understand the method very well so what are the weaknesses of the analytical test procedure it can be understanding the robustness of analytical method so go through the validation document go through the method transfer method for development document and understand the methods weaknesses as much as possible do you know the sample and standard uh, storage condition do you know that whether the standard and sample they are hygroscopic in the nature so these characteristics are very essential because you are also going to manage the sample storage at your end so those details must be well discussed well understood and in case if there is a need to have the any exceptional storage requirement like store below minus 20 degree celsius something like that do you have the required storage arrangements if not you can have the time to get this arrangement done in case of hygroscopic api or the sample you must be very careful about the lab humidities so for example if your lab humidity limit is not more than 70% but that is for the ordinary product the product which are not humid which are not hygroscopic in the nature but sometimes to handle and manage such hygroscopic product you may need to have a humidity less than let us say uh 50% or 40% rh so how you are going to accommodate those extra needs during the analysis who and how the protocol is prepared and what is the method transfer strategy now this point is very important so who in your case makes the protocol is the receiving lab makes the protocol or does the transferring unit makes the protocol so whoever makes the protocol it must be completely reviewed by both the parties and understand and come to a common agreement that which strategy we are going to adopt so there can be a uh, three different strategies possible the first one is the comparison between the two results between the results generated by the two different labs the second can be a co validation so whenever there is a validation running in one lab the some part of the validation can be executed into the another lab so it is called as a co validation the third can be a, a, a quite of simple uh, the, where there will be no comparison made 
and that is the complete validation of analytical test procedure or the partial validation of analytical test procedure so out of these three you understand which strategy you are going to adopt and according to that protocol must be prepared according to that acceptance criteria needs to be set and that is what the point number four when it comes to setting an acceptance criteria, none of the guidelines talks about the acceptance criteria because your analytical test procedure is subjective to your product and it can be different for different organizations. So for that reason, the acceptance criteria needs to be set based on to the specification part. So what is the specification for the test under transfer? The wider is the acceptance criteria for this peg for that particular parameter, uh, let us say assay between 98 to 102 versus assay between 95 to 105 versus assay between 90 to 110 percent so according to you what should be the acceptance criteria for the case number one 98 to 102 percent assay and what should be the acceptance criteria for case number three where the limit is 90 to 110 percent so understand the wider is the spec the wider should be the acceptance criteria also do you know the requirement and their availability? So what are the requirements in terms of the glassware requirement, in terms of standards, samples, instrument, etc. So all those requirements must be well discussed into your op opening meeting for the method transfer and make sure that it is not only about availability of the glassware, but also what standard glassware you need. Is it a class A is required? You must have the class a. in case if there are some reactive materials towards the glass material then you must also have the required glass materials available because sometimes you may need a amber colored glass glass for because it is a uh, material which is uh, not stable into the uh, the light it is a photo labile product and hence you may need the different uh, the amber colored glass material so for that reason it is very important to understand each and every specific minute details as a part of your uh, opening meeting is an analyst well experienced so you should allocate the method transfer task to someone who understand the technique very well who knows the method transfer protocol sop and who has the adequate experience on transferring the analytical test procedures so this person can be good support during execution he or she can understand the evaluation part how the method is performing whether good great or not good and in case if there are certain concerns while execution the person can also give certain recommendations so the person must be able to understand these three aspect of activity execution evaluation and finally the recommendation if required do you have a time period to complete the method transfer i have seen that some companies do have this a uh, time window that the moment you start the method transfer it must get executed within some period it may be one month two month or three months it's according to your organization and in case if there is no such boundaries of the time it's absolutely all right you can follow your own sop the next point how much is the time gap between the result from two labs now this point is more important than point number seven See, sometimes what happens, you are conducting a method transfer for related substances. So the transferring unit have conducted the analysis six months back and the receiving unit is now conducting the analysis today. So within during the six months, if some of the impurities are increasing, they are degradant, you may have the different in the impurity result. It is not because of the analytical variation, but it is because of the the intrinsic nature of the molecule because molecule itself is degrading so to avoid this confusion and the conflict it is very important to define the requirement of the time gap what should be the maximum time gap between two analyses and you can think about let us say 15 days or one month which is suitable according to you how you are going to investigate failure during the method transfer so it is it cannot be said that there will be no any incident going to happen during method transfer there can be the result which are not within the acceptance criteria 
or even if you are analyzing the batch the batch suppose does not match the specification it is out of the spec result so how you are going to investigate those failures also must be part of your protocol either deviation sop has to be used if yes then under what circumstances you are going to investigate the result by deviation sop if os sop has to be used under what circumstances the os sop has to be used so those details are very much required in the protocol itself is the sample lot suitable so whenever you are conducting a method transfer you are challenge going to compare the result between two labs for example and in case if the sample itself is not homogeneous how come the results will be a homogeneous i mean homogeneous could not be the right term for the result to say but we can say they closely associated to each other because the sample is non homogeneous so how you are going to predict the repeatability of analytical result how you are going to compare the result between lab 1 and lab 2 in case if the sample itself is the sole reason for the variation and to avoid this circumstance you need to have a homogeneous sample and also understand that the sample must be in sufficient quantity because there could be some incidences repetitions required and you must also have some control sample so that in future if query arises you can have the sample and in case if there is a need to conduct some experiment you have the scope of conducting it so also keep some reserved sample have you verified the required water quality which is most of the times overlooked we say okay we have the hplc grade water we have the milliliter grade water and hence it is sufficient but i have seen that sometimes for uh, the analysis which are at lower wavelength using uv detection technique the water can becomes the source of lot of unknown peaks ghost peak lot of noise or disturbed baseline so make sure what quality of water is required and you must discuss this during your opening meeting are all required instruments within the expected operating range now this is a very important point because most of the times we only think about okay there is a gas chromatograph required i do have the gas chromatograph but what specification is necessary for the gas chromatograph that supposed to be used maybe in terms of your column oven temperature maybe in terms of the heating range of the detector maybe in terms of your injection volume so those details has to be confirmed well before you start your experimentation let us say you are having a gc with the column oven temperature calibrated from 40 degrees celsius but in case if the new method under method transfer needs to be executed at 30 degrees celsius then how you are going to accommodate those differences so this is called as the operating range so your gc is suitable to operate from 40 degrees celsius onward but now you need to use the gas chromatograph for 30 degrees celsius so do you need to calibrate the gas chromatograph from 30 degrees celsius onward so those details has to be discussed well in the opening meeting so that you will not end up with the incidences is glassware cleaning for the product under transfer differs from the existing cleaning procedure now this may not be a great point of discussion but do not ignore this point sometimes if the you have the glassware cleaning validation executed now based on your worst case scenarios but in case if the new products coming in is going to become the worst case then you may have to think about i need to first conduct the glassware cleaning validation with the newly added molecule and then i will execute the method transfer so those points needs to be discussed is there an extra nest peak observed at the receiving lab so i am talking about the chromatography technique maybe gas chromatography or hplc now in this case extra nest peaks are very important especially during residual solvent or related substances analysis so have a look in those points it is not only about comparing the related substances observed at the transferring unit and the receiving unit but the extra nest peak also needs to be evaluated very critically 
इज आर टी और आर आर टी एंड रिस्पॉन्स फॉर क्रोमेटोग्राफिक मेथड कंपेरेबल सी वंस दिस मेथड ट्रांसफर गेट्स हैपन यू आर गोइंग टू रिपोर्ट द इम्प्यूरिटीज समटाइम्स बेस्ड ऑन टू द आर आर टीज दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम यू मस्ट बी वेरी करेक्ट इन केस इफ देर इज अ वेरिएशन ऑब्जर्व इन द आर टी और आर आर टी यू कैन हैव सम काइंड ऑफ एक्शन टेकन बट इफ यू डू नॉट focus on this important information you may have to live with the situation for the lifetime of the analytical test procedure so make sure that you are getting the response correctly retention time correctly rrt correctly for the impurities it's very important and last but not the least in case if you are operating on the gradient elution mode the dual volume or gradient delay volume is very critical to get the expected chromatographic pattern and sometimes your analytical test procedure may say that you can have some change in the flow based on to the dual volume so ask for the dual volume how much is the dual volume of your system during the analysis and then compare in the qc what is the dual volume of your spc system so if there is a great difference between dual volume you may end up getting the different chromatographic pattern different retention times so the correction may be required i hope you must have now got you know where you must be looking at so that you will not end up with the surprises during the method transfer thank you so much